You want to be on a YouTube video? Mm-hmm. Okay. Hey, so here everyone. So this one, this is Sloane, and uh, she does not want to leave me make the video alone. She wanted to be in the video, right? You want it to be in the video? Okay, so we're gonna do the intro together. Today, we're doing one of my favorite things in the world, which is basically arranging something, taking something and transforming it into something new. I've always loved that. Do you like doing that too? Yeah, so I remember when I was a kid, I had this uh, gardening phase. I love to garden for a little while. For that reason, I would have a blank canvas and then move some rocks and plant some things around and uh, you get something new and interesting. So we're gonna do that with music. I have a piece here that you're hearing in the back. This was an improv that I did a few weeks ago. Just me and my guitar for a different type of video that didn't turn out well, but that's okay. Because I'm gonna take that, which again, remember it was completely improvised, and I'm gonna load it into my sequencer and try to transform that improv into something that sounds a lot more structured and uh, we're gonna basically take an idea and make it into something better and awesome, hopefully. So, first step is to import that track into my computer and, uh, well, we'll see the rest together. You ready? Okay, let's get started. All right, so here we are in Logic Pro 10. Whatever we do together can be done in any other digital audio workstation. So, this is not a video about the practical, technical steps to use Logic Pro 10. This just happens to me by digital audio workstation of choice, but you can do that with anything. So the object here is to work on a piece that was completely improvised and make it sound richer, deeper, and more organized than it was. So I created an empty project here. On that project, I have my WAV file, which was the improv. And because this was a complete improv with nothing but myself and the guitar, there's no tempo, it's free form. So I'm gonna make sure that the tempo is deactivated when I record anything. And the first step, which should be the first step of any musical work you do, is to listen to this and gather clues as to what you would like to hear. Before listening though, even though that's the first step, <laughs> there's a step before the first step for me because it's gonna facilitate things. I'm gonna add a MIDI track. So I'm gonna use my MIDI controller here. I'm gonna select the software instrument. The default one that I have configured in Logic Pro is Omnisphere. That's something that I use quite often. So I just create my track. It's gonna open up Omnisphere, which is a, a software by Spectrosonic. And it's a collection of different atmospheric synthesizers. And I kind of know that the piece is um, more mellow, it's longer in space, it's not really rhythm orientated, so I want something mellow in my sequencer, not something that is rhythmically rich. So I don't I wouldn't want something with a with a you know with a loop or anything like that. I want something a pad, more of a pad type of thing. So I'm gonna just uh, kind of um, look through things and there's one instrument that I really like in there. It's the afterglow instrument. So I'll just uh, search for that, uh, load that up, and maybe we can use it. So the reason I, I loaded that instrument first before listening is that if, I li if we listen to this, which we're gonna do right now, we might hear something that we wanna do right away. And we don't wanna lose that idea, so that way I can just record right away. And here, the job, is to listen with the ears of a painter. And we're gonna paint over that track. And we can start from wherever. We're just filling in the blanks. We can move things around. So it really doesn't matter. Here, for example, we had a, a chord right there. I'm gonna paint over that chord. Uh, so I'm trying to find the notes. I'm going to loop that section. Bum, 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 bum. Those are some of the notes that I gathered. I'm going to use that chord over it to paint over what was recorded. So 
So now the question is, do I play it in that, that octave or maybe higher? Maybe, we'll see. Let's hear how it sounds an octave lower. I think an octave higher is going to enhance that. So now we're just gonna practice because it's not in time. That's where it comes. And I've got to stop right when that new card comes in. So we'll try. I think that works. We're going to start that chord a little bit before. So that's the beauty of MIDI. I can go into my MIDI uh, information here and drag those notes so that they start a little bit before right when that chord hits and you see it I think it's right here yep right there right around there and that sounds about right for me so this is what we have now we're gonna record that chord now Making the track bigger will help me visually be in place because I can't rely on a click. So that's what I'll do. So we're going to continue uh, painting some of those basic chords using this patch. So I'm going to do that throughout the track, same exact method, and I will meet you right after, and then we'll see what else we can do to that. Okay, so we're back. It took me about 10, 15 minutes and I filled in the blanks and you can see here on the screen that we have some paint over it. So it sounds a little bit less improvised. Whenever there are two instruments that play in sync together, well, the ear recognizes that that was prepared. And that's something really cool that I learned a long time ago when I was in art class. Not that I'm an artist at all, <laughs> but we had to have art class in um, high school. Um, actually, it was even before high school. I think it was middle school. And the teacher, I was, I was really, really bad at art. You know, we had to draw a mountain or something. And he told me, you know, yeah, you, you do suck. <laughs> and so we had an agreement there. But he said, you know, if it doesn't matter because I did too. And all you need to do is work on it. If you work on something, even if it really sucks, if it's very basic, you work on it a little bit and a little bit, a little bit. And eventually, people will appreciate whatever you did. Even if it's coming from a place of non-talent, people are going to appreciate the, the work that was done. If you work on something enough, it will become something valuable. Same with this. What I'm saying is um, we started with a piece that was completely improvised, and I, there was no real direction. I tried to make it coherent, but there's there's some flaws in the performance. It wasn't prepared at all, but we were trying to work on it and, and hide the flaws and enhance the melodic things, and eventually we want to create something new. We started from something, and we're trying to embellish it, make it better. So we've got our blue track, which was the improv line, the guitar. The green is the afterglow synth. We painted over a few chords like that. We're gonna add a new track, and I'm, what I'm hearing is something lower, maybe something more uh, cinematic slash um, synthesizer-y, but, but in the low end, we're also gonna use Omnisphere here, and we're just gonna browse, see if something interesting happens. But I'm definitely hearing something in the low end that maybe I can use on some of the improvised parts, the melodic playing here. Over that kind of thing. Bop, some lower end there. So I'm just here's cool because it, um, it's got a lot of different ways to find your patches. Um, and I'm going to go into the film section and we'll just see what we have. Glorious Guitars is not what I have in mind, but since I just see it here, it's one of my favorite patches. I loaded it up. Maybe we can find something interesting to do with that. It sounds kind of like this. Love that sound. Maybe we can use that, actually. 
I don't know. Let's see. Bum with that sound. Hey, I got the right note again. <laughs> My ear must be getting getting a little better. Let's just try to record that. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's okay. And just for visualization to see what else we need to do, we're gonna color code these. Um, and hey, where's my color thing? There we go. I'm trying to find the line where that I can. There we go. There it is. We use that color here. Let's see what the two first notes are. Bum. Um, that's what it'll do. I think that'll work really well, actually. So I forgot about this, but this is uh, pressure sensitive. So if you hit a note hard, you'll have that bending approach instead of that, which can be cool, which happened there. But really, I intended to have this. So let's let's compare the difference. I'm going to go into that MIDI note that I had. Since it's a velocity thing, I'm going to decrease the velocity and, and the bend should go away. You know, maybe we should play these an octave higher. Let's hear. I think that works. That's a weird chord. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. We'll try that. Right here. I think that'll work. So there's a little um, synchronization issue here. This should start a little bit before. This one too. That's a cool thing with MIDI. You can just drag the notes, change the velocity, and all that. Good. Play that one. Nice. So this note started a little bit before, I think. Yeah, should be right here. There you go. So now we have visually three elements, the guitar, the chords that we did earlier, and that new instrument, which I'm going to use throughout the track to add some consistency. So it sounds like it's prepared, it's organized, all that is going towards that same goal to create a piece that is consistent and that makes sense. So I'm just gonna continue that and uh, at the end, it might be finished, maybe not, we might add a few things, but um, I will let you hear the full piece at the end of this video. This is really fun, so let's uh, continue working on this just a little bit. If you like this video, thumbs up, can you do this? Thumbs up? Yep. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you in a little bit. Salut, can you say salut? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I said you. <laughs>